Hi, it's Roz here, and I'm going to be talking a bit more about my forthcoming book, The Gifts of Solitude. And today I'd particularly like to talk about how important it is when you're on your own to be your own best friend. We're now on day 18 of our lockdown in the UK, and quite a few of us will be spending quite a lot of time on our own, and sometimes the voices that come up when we're not being completely bombarded with the usual levels of input from media and conversations and advertising messages and all of the rest of it. Um, when we're not having all of those voices coming in at us, it actually gives an opportunity for the voices in our heads to get a word in edgeways. And some of those voices are kind and some of them not so much. And before you think I really have lost the plot and gone completely bonkers talking about voices in my head, I think if we're honest, we all have them. Um, you probably get the sense sometimes that there's a bit of a dialogue going on. Anybody who has ever been on a diet, I'm sure, is familiar with this situation where you've got a little angel on one shoulder telling you that it's all going to be worth it and you're going to have that bikini body and you'll be so proud of yourself when you've lost the weight. And then there's a little voice on the other shoulder going, oh, you've had a hard day, you deserve a cookie. So that's a very simple example of the voices in your head. We all have them. It's perfectly normal. We might just be more aware of them at the moment because we have fewer other voices in our heads. And unfortunately, the brain likes to pay more attention to the negative, mean, nasty, critical voices than the nice, friendly, encouraging voices. And there's kind of a good evolutionary reason for that. Um, it's called negativity bias, which refers to the tendency of our brain to focus on the problems, like the one or two percent of things that are going badly, rather than the 98, 99 percent of stuff that's going well. And you can imagine when we were hunter-gatherers, we needed to be paying attention to the negative thing, like the big, scary, long-toothed negative thing that might be running straight towards us, rather than the 99% of the savannah that was looking lovely and friendly. And people who didn't pay attention to the problem in the scene tended not to get the chance to pass their genes on to the next generation. So here we are, after many, many generations of evolution, very highly evolved to pay attention to problems. And inevitably, those negative thoughts do come up in our heads. Some of them are from our past, maybe a parent or a teacher or a boss. Somebody at some point used to say mean things to us about our intelligence or our appearance or whatever. And those voices still sometimes echo around in our heads. And that's normal, but we don't have to attach to them. Uh, we could just let them come and let them go. And the other really important thing is to make sure that your voice towards yourself is friendly. Because when we're just on our own, there isn't somebody else there to be nice to us. And sometimes we can be so harsh. We do say things to ourselves that we probably wouldn't say to our own worst enemy. We criticize, criticize ourselves for being fat or stupid or lazy or whatever. We'd never say that to our friends. Well, maybe we would, but <laughs> they probably wouldn't stay friends for very long if we did. So it really helps to get into the habit of being kind to yourself. Just once in a while, check in, find out what's going on in that inner dialogue say something nice to yourself. If you're really finding these times hard, then when you've managed to get through another day and you've done some positive things, take time to thank yourself, to give yourself a pat on the back and say, nice job. There are so many things that you could have done. You could have hit the bottle this evening or, or this morning <laughs> um, and you didn't. Well done. Um, you reached out to a friend that you hadn't contacted for a while. It was a little bit outside your comfort zone, bit of a stretch, but you did it. Well done. And when we actually, this is going to sound even more bonkers, but when we say it out loud, it's somehow even more powerful than if we just think a nice thought towards ourselves. So if you're feeling a bit low and not getting along very well with yourself, first of all, forgive yourself. 
it's fine, it's normal. Just go, I understand why this is happening, I forgive myself. And then show yourself some appreciation for all of the hard things that you managed to do today. And then just give yourself some real love. Pick an aspect of yourself that you particularly respect and admire and talk to yourself about that. Say, Rosie, you know that, that blog post that you wrote today, um, you know, you weren't feeling very inspired, but you're tenacious. You're determined. When you commit to do something, you show up and you do it. Well done. Nice job, girl. Just say something nice to yourself because when we're not surrounded by the friends that we're usually surrounded by with social distancing and isolation, it's up to us to really be our own best friend. So um, from me to you, sending you love and friendship. I hope you're doing okay, staying happy and healthy and reasonably sane in these trying times. Take care.